uh, we'll show how to do a pneumatic cylinder lap uh, on this experiment. So first thing, this is the compressed air line, you need that, and that is connected to the bench. Right now the, this is on, so this is off, so across, and then this is on, in line. And then this pressurized fluid, you can see about uh, 90 PSI there, going this way, and then following here, it's about the same PSI, so it's not much leak, even though there's a little bit of leak there, but that's fine. So you know that there is a 90 PSI pressure line coming here. Now we have connected that. So here on the inlet uh, of that pressure line, connected that with a four-way directional valve. Now this might look safety glass. Yeah, you gotta be wiring that. Otherwise, uh, you need to wire a safety glass because if this thing gets like this, it might hit your eyes and maybe a bad situation. So this doesn't look like a four-way directional valve, but it is. So the fluid coming in, and then um, it going, this two A and B port is connected to the cylinder, and then the exhaust, it doesn't need to go to the sump because this air is clean, it can simply get out to the environment. So the other port is actually here, leaving the air out. So. So once you basically operate that, you can see the amount of force it lifting and then the velocity of this, count the time and see the measure, measure this distance, calculate the velocity, you know the force, then you can get the power by multiplying velocity and force with some constant in there. So you can get the horsepower. You can also calculate the pneumatic horsepower from the pressure here, you can read 90 PSI, and then the flow rate. Same thing like hydraulics, so pressure time flow rate and some constant. Because it's here, you have temperature and all the things, check that formula. There is a procedure sheet, you can see how to calculate all this. So uh, for that calculation formula, all you need is a flow rate and the pressure reading, and also probably to just temperature. So let me turn this thing off and then I'll show you how to connect this uh, flow meter. So this is, uh, I will make a hiss noise because it's all pressurized, but hopefully, let's see. Okay, we gotta do, we want to connect there, so. We can show this in the next video. Another way. That one? Much All right, so here we go. Thank you. Got another way. All right, so it goes here. Then another one is there. Let's turn it on again. It shouldn't matter. Okay. There we go. So it's about 50 CFM. Um, cubic feet per. It's actually an hour, cubic feet per hour, and the standard SCFM, which is standard cubic feet per hour. You'll have to convert that to cubic feet per minute. I think the formula is in cubic feet per minute. And this is in a standard temperature and pressure. So then you need to record today's temperature and everything and put that in that formula to get that amount of power coming from this compressed line and then you can compare how much it is transferred. Once again, you're not testing the efficiency, you are basically calculating the power transfer, how much power coming through the system, 
and how much it is transferred by the selector. I think that's all. Okay.